and welcome to today's Brand Building Masterclass. Yes, welcome. And first of all, let's just check that you are in the right place. Would you say that you want to attract more of your ideal customers than you are doing now? And would you also say that you want to get more money, earn more money, earn what you're worth and start living the lifestyle that you truly deserve and have more fun while you're at it? Well, maybe you're here because currently you're not attracting the ideal customers, potentially even the wrong type. Now, would you say that you've have had a customer in the past or encountered a customer in the past that you might really, you know, really wish you hadn't had? Well, uh, we're all the same in that one. You might have that one or two the then. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. It might be that you're just, uh, you've got customers, but you're not earning and charging what you could be charging to get the kind of lifestyle that you want to live. And it means that you're not having to be able to spend the time with the people that you love and maybe even spoil them. It might just be that it's, you're really, really frustrated because you just can't get your business to get the traction it needs, to get the success and visibility you want, and ultimately that means that you're just not getting what you want from it. And maybe you're working loads of hours and feel like you're just treading water all the time, that you're not moving forward and your business isn't moving forward either. Absolutely, and where you wanna be though is in a place where your business is thriving. Your customers are coming to you. You're not, you're not even going to find them. Uh, you're attracting the right kinds of customers. You're alienating the ones that don't respect you the and realize your worth, the time, exactly, the, 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 the energy drainers. You're attracting the ones that you really want, and now you're in a place where you've got even more time. You've got more choice, and you've also got the money to give you the security and abundance of life that you actually really want to live. So that's the real difference. That's where you want to be. So would you agree then that you need a different strategy from the one you've been using from where you are right now to where you want to be? Yeah? Well, that's what we're going to be talking to you about today. Because what do we mean out there? Well, what's going on in business that means there's such a need to have very clever, intelligent, and proven success strategies to help you move your business forward? Well, let's look at it. First of all, um, when you look at what I was thinking like this, 10 years ago, there were 4 million businesses in the UK. There are now 5.2 million. That means in just the last 10 years, there's been 1.2 million new businesses starting up. Well, you think of all the redundancies, you think of everything that's happening, people are getting paid less, hours are being cut, people are getting more frustrated. Yeah. And I think people are also finding that there are other options. There are, there's something else out there that they didn't know about before. Yeah, and, and this is, here's another uh, startling statistic, and that is that of all those 5.2 million businesses, only 7,000 of them account for half of all the revenue that businesses make. Yeah, 7,000 of those businesses, but all the, half of the money that's made in business, 7,000 of, uh, of those businesses are making most of that money. Mm. Isn't it amazing? So when we look at just the last year, th uh, 345,000 business started up and 240,000 closed down, We're talking went out of business. One year. Yeah. Now, interestingly, we used to use a statistic like this before, saying that one in three businesses fail. We thought that was high. Uh, but it is high. It's ridiculously high. But of course, that's not even true anymore. No. It's two in three. So you've got a, a less of a chance of succeeding in business when you start out than you actually think you have. Mm. But the thing is, does that have to be the case? No. Well, it the really truth is, it really is. And we're going to show you some fantastic things today as to why that, that is the case. So what, it, what I obviously want to put across to you now is that if that's the truth, if those figures are actually true, which percentage do you want to be in? Which, which third, if you like, do you want to be in? Obviously, you want to be in the top third, the one that succeeds. Well, you wouldn't be here if you weren't looking to increase your business and, and help you to build a, a brand and a business that really helps you to get the lifestyle that you yeah, want. So, absolutely. I think I mean, they're here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and here's the thing. When, when have you got to start taking action? Well, if it's happened in that time, in just the last year, just those sorts months. of statistics. Actually, that's not even 12 months, is it? Well, that's well no. only six or seven months. Yeah, that's very true, because there's been an increase, obviously, over yeah. the last couple of years. So it's increasing all the time. Mm -hmm. New businesses are starting up and not getting the advice that they need. So would you agree that the time to take action is now because you don't want to become one of those statistics early on as you're growing your business? And it's not just the very startup businesses. It's those that have been going for up to a year, maybe even two. So... It, time to act is, is really now. I think also as well, and that's a really good point in terms of why to act now. And somebody said it to us a few years ago in terms of where we were and where we wanted to be. And uh, Andy said to us, how frustrating would it be if somebody else 
had the same kind of idea as you, but they got it out there first. Mm. Oh, and yeah. then that actually, that spurred us on so much because we just thought, my God, you're right. Why do we keep serving these customers over here when actually this is where we want to be? That's the thing that's going to give us the lifestyle we want. And, and if we don't do it first, someone else will. And you are in exactly the same situation. Yeah. You, you are the best in your industry at what you do. It just might be that somebody else you know is getting more money or more customers. And you look at them and you think, how the hell are they getting more customers than me? Or how are they living a better lifestyle than me? Well, most of the time it just comes down to visibility. Yeah, and so something's got to change. And we're, we're talking from a position of experience um, because there are so many things that you need to do to make sure you are attracting the right kind of customers and then how you then continue that journey with them. Uh, I mean, if you go back to sort of 2008, nine, Sammy, when we were in, in obviously in, in business still, um, we, we had We've an been instance. We've in two years together. Yeah, if, you, if you've been, in fact, if you've been with me, uh, but yeah, literally five, six, seven years yeah. ago, um, you'd have seen me in my office with my head in my hands, absolutely frustrated. And at this time, we were serving, we'd, go, we'd gone from you know, a small business to serving smaller growing businesses to the point of serving big corporates in the services we do to help them brand themselves, communicate effectively, and start building their brand in a far more effective, cost-effective, and productive way. Well, word of mouth, it just built and built, yeah. didn't it? So yeah. the customers we naturally started working with, they told other people about us and other people and other people. And, um, yeah. and we've never really had to market our business. We've never spent much money on marketing. Mm. We no. haven't had to. We've built all of our businesses through word of mouth. Indeed. But naturally, those customers got bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, and we got to that point where, the point is that we got to that point where it wasn't, it wasn't that much fun mm. anymore. It was not about. It was a good lifestyle, but no life to live. There was no time to live it. And, uh, and what's the, the point and, of having and, money? Yeah, and in this, if you can't go out and spend it, well, you haven't got time. Exactly. And in this instance, it's because we just took, picked up the wrong customer, mm -hmm. and and it was one where we had someone who wasn't actually necessarily the, the, the complete decision maker. And we, we did lots and lots time, of work though, for them. We? we all well, no, no, we never do. This is it. You tend to find these things out yeah. as you go along. And we provided the services for them, and we did a fantastic job, and put all as always, you know, um, doing going going further than the extra yeah. mile, because that was we never enough. We always had to add value, 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 yeah. um, with a hope that they were going to respect our time, pay us on time, and pay us what we were worth. Mm -hmm. Well, as a result of not getting the right customer, it all fell down. And I think sometimes as well, you know, and if you're like us you'll be the kind of person that genuinely wants to make a difference and genuinely wants to help that person. But in doing so, sometimes you you can go over the line. And because you've then gone over the line to help them and you've gone over and above and beyond what you're, what's in the contract, you then have, it's you that's gone over the line. The customer then starts having different expectations and the relationship changes and all of a sudden they then become that time vampire <laughs> that they just yeah. literally expect more and more and more and, and actually you, you want to give, give, give but there's only so much you can do before that starts not only costing you your business, costing you your life, costing you your time, costing you your energy. Not, I mean we got to the point where we were so tired. Have you ever had that experience where you you phone's ringing you look down at your phone and you see a certain number on there and you think oh god I just no I can't answer that <laughs> well it, this particular person it was getting to the point where uh, it was just like that wasn't it yeah, exactly. and, and it was not only in our team but we'd built up to a team of 13 staff as well by that point yeah. what we didn't realize was it was really affecting them as well yeah, and it does. It's almost like a cancer in the business. Mm, yeah, it was. And you've got to cut that cancer out. Now, we, we, make, we might laugh about it now, but there's a good yeah. reason for this, and that is we that we learned the lesson. Mm. And thank goodness that we did. And as we grew our business, we realized there was another thing, a key factor that was, was uh, making us unhappy in business. And it mm. was that the, the larger the business we started to work with, the less we got to work with the individuals mm. whose face we used to see on the small business owner, that the difference made the change. Um, you know, they, they, they were, we were working with, say, the marketing consultant or the marketing um, employee in a business, and all we ended up doing was uh, was trying to make them look good. We weren't well, helping we were the making businesses them to look make good success. because they obviously weren't telling the director necessarily that they were working with us. We were helping them to shine because we were doing all the work in the background. <laughs> they, they were just going to the director and saying, "Right, look what we've done," you know. So it made them look good, but it didn't really light us up. 
do yeah. light us up because when you're working directly with the person who is uh, um, in responsible for the business they're responsible for it growing when they see that those changes start to happen and that smile on their face the phone calls when they're ringing you when they're texting you I've just won this new client and this has happened you don't get that when you're working with the marketing person within yeah, a business especially when you get to we started working mm. with plcs and large organizations and blue chip companies you just you know you, it could take three months just to get one decision from mm. <laughs> from the whole board of directors and and we like seeing action taken quickly because the results come quickly too yeah and what it identified in the end is that who did we used to enjoy working with? We love the business. We have a massive passion for it. We are doing what we love, but not necessarily with the people that we wanted to do with it. So we realized that we went, when we really, really enjoyed it is with, 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 with the smaller businesses. Yeah. And uh, the growing, growing businesses, managed. you could see the results, seriously see the results, not just in their business, in their faces. Yeah. Um, and in their body language as yeah. well because I think as well and you might have found this is um, you know when when you're not proud of something or if you're not sure if you're not certain about something then your body language changes but when you're absolutely certain that your brand is right that all the messages behind it are right that your website and everything that backs you up when you're talking about something if they go and Google you then they see complete consistency and they see all these most amazing things about you there's a pride there and you start to stand differently and we noticed mm. that when we were working with the owner manager their body language was changing the way they communicated about themselves was changing and as a result because they were communicating they were leading that communication all the other people that they were talking to were then going out and spreading that message mm. in that same proud way so that made a huge difference to us and how we felt about the relationships that we were working in. So in something in, had to change. It did have to change. And of course, we got to that point where the people we wanted to work with couldn't afford the, the, uh, our agency prices at the time. So something definitely had to change. We, like we're saying to you, had to change a strategy to get the kind of lifestyle we wanted, the choice we wanted, and to be able to help more people, which was actually what we got into this for. So we um, took all of our knowledge and provided it created a system that so we could help more people get the traction they need in their business, start to build their brand, and start to attract the right kinds of customers. And I think as well that the other thing that that we we were getting more frustrated with was that we knew that we could help smaller businesses. We knew because we'd been one, we'd started up businesses, we knew exactly what it was to start, build, grow and exit a business mm. and we'd helped loads of other people, hundreds of other people to do that in their own business. But what we had to do was start bringing the power back from the bigger businesses and start giving that power back to smaller businesses because the bigger businesses, while they had bigger marketing budgets and they had bigger spend availability what they didn't have was flexibility and that's what small business owners have and that's what you as a small business owner has have as um, as a, a great bonus is a great benefit to you but you have to act now because if you don't act now then the other larger bigger companies they will get out there and they they, they just they're swallowing smaller businesses up but the smaller businesses that are actually growing and becoming successful are the ones that are nimble, they're fast, they take action straight away, and they, they actually they use the networks around them, the people that are already doing what they want to do and calling on them for help. Yeah, so we are going to show you some fantastic things on this webinar because we're going to take elements of what we've been helping those businesses with to get the success they're getting now by uh, giving you some secrets, giving some fantastic secrets now to get you the traction and get you started. Because that's the real message, message about this whole thing is what do you do now? Mm -hmm. If you're going to take this step, how are you going to get started? Yeah. So let's, um, let's bring up some of the uh, slides we've got to show you the things that we've done. Okay, so moving over. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as we can. Obviously, in the interest of getting through the webinar, we'll have certain breaks to do that. And then if we haven't answered your question, we'll make sure that we answer them by email straight back to you so you get those questions. And if we can, we'll publicize those questions and answers so that other people get the value of yeah. the answers as well. And you, actually, you can find there's over 200 videos in our YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com forward slash how to build a brand, you'll find over 200 videos where people have already asked us questions and we've answered them already so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you always get our updates absolutely okay so let's get started 
First of all, what we well, the system that we're talking about here that's helped so many businesses is the brand Kickstarter mm -hmm. system that we developed. And it's, it's enabling businesses to really start getting the, the, um, the right ideas, the right uh, actions in place and activities to start getting the traction they want. Okay, so first step. The first thing, obviously without this step, um, you won't, you know, it's about not getting the attraction, not, not actually attracting the right kinds of audience from the very, very beginning. Um, but with this step, it's how you can then start attracting these, these, uh, these uh, ideal customers so they'll come flooding through your doors. And that step is where is the right place to start. A lot of people get this step wrong and be, they go into what we call doing syndrome. They feel like because they're doing something that they're doing the right thing. And actually what they end up doing is wasting a lot of time, a lot of productivity, a lot of energy, and usually a lot of money as well. And that's how this step can go really quite wrong. And what you don't want to do is spend the next nine months getting it wrong and then find out the hard way. So that's why this, this step is so important, okay. making sure you do get it right first time. Yeah, and would you agree that uh, you want to be spending your time wisely because there is your, your audience uh, are going to respond to you. you you've, got to, you've got to find them, first of all. Mm. So there are many things you could do, but of course, if you're trying to please everyone with everything, then you're more likely to please no one with anything. So it's about getting these things right at the very start. And maybe that's where you're seeing yourself in your business about, okay, where do I start? We're going to start talking about that now as well. Mm. So the next step is, um, is a really important step. Now, without this... You'll not, you'll not, it doesn't matter who you speak to or where you're communicating, whether online or offline, you won't be hitting the target. You will not be actually speaking to the people who really count. Yet with this, you're going to find that because you identify exactly who it is you want to be speaking to, you'll start to get far more trust building more quickly and you'll be hitting the target straight away. And that step is who should you target first? This is so important. Well, all of these steps, they're all really vital. Every single one. You know, we, we've missed some out. We've tried putting others in. And this is the process, the system that works absolutely 100% every time. Yeah, and this is it. So it's about understanding who your target audience is. So we're going to show you some really good tips around that. And do you know what's interesting as well, Mars, with this one, is a lot of people, I, I would, I'd go so far as to say, I don't know if you'd agree with me, but I'd go so far as to say that 9 out of 10 people, if not 10 out of 10 people that we work with, they think they're targeting the right customer. Nice. And when we do the exercises and the activities with them that really highlight who it is they should be working with, they're absolutely shocked, aren't they? Oh, yes. And, and they can usually charge three or four times. We actually had somebody a couple of weeks ago that's now charging 10 times what they were because their ideal customer wasn't who they yeah, thought totally. it was. Yes, definitely. Imagine yeah. what that would do to your business if you did that. And when we say ideal, we're talking about the ones who would pay you what you're worth. They don't question about and quibble about the, the amount that you are demanding for your services. Um, so who you should target first is absolutely essential. And it's like the question we asked at the beginning in that, you know, do, do you want to be starting attracting the right kind of customers? And have you already got some customers you wish you hadn't? Well, this step is going to help you prevent that entirely. Mm. So on to the next step. Well, first, once you know who you're after and you know where to start, what do you do to attract those customers? What sort of activities do? Because without this step, you could be doing all sorts of things to try, uh, hoping that you're hitting the right mark with this, this, uh, this ideal client, but in fact, you're not, and you're alienating the ones you really, really want. What, what we find actually is that you know people they'll they'll put stuff out on Facebook, or they'll put stuff out on uh, by text or by email, or they'll try different things, and they'll go, "Well, that didn't work." Well, actually, it's not that the vehicle didn't work. It was that you just didn't put the right fuel in the vehicle. <laughs> you yep. probably heard the analogy before. If, if you've got a petrol car and you drive up to a petrol station and you put diesel in it, it's not going to get you very far. And even if it does get you, you're going to have a really bumpy ride. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that and spend time and money in and and energy in attracting those customers in the wrong ways. It means you're spending a fortune more than you need to. We already said before, we don't spend that much on marketing. And the reason we don't spend that much on marketing is because we do it in exactly the right way. There is no wastage in what we do. We're going to share that with you. And maybe that's going to be really useful for your business at this point, mm. so that you can start to just do the activities and communicate in those ways to attract your ideal customers, which is this next step. And, and remember as well that when you're attracting your ideal customers, you know, you're, you're not a massive, great, big uh, business that has a massive, great, big marketing budget. So you need to make sure you're getting the very best out of every penny that you are spending on your marketing. 
So on to the next step. Now, if you don't do this, this is imperative. After all the things you've just been learning here, if you don't do this step, then it doesn't matter where, you know, where, where the channels are. It doesn't matter if you found where your customers are. If you don't do this, you will not actually engage them. Yet with this step, you're going to be able to get them to act, tune in with you, get, build that rapport really quickly, and you know, start to share the value of what you've got to offer. And what this does is speed up your conversion as well. Absolutely. And that step is how can you create a brand message that people will relate to? And what do we mean by that? Well, the thing is, the ideal customers speak in a certain way. They use a certain language, as well as where they might hang out. So if you can get the brand messages right, the language you're using will naturally relate to the people you want to become your customers. And what's really special about that is when you're using the same language that they are using to find what you provide, when they find you, they will then be able to share that message with all of their friends because it's quite likely that your ideal customers have friends that are just like them. So this is a great part of the brand Kickstarter where you create messages that not only are memorable, consistent and repeatable by the person you're talking to, but that they will go out and they'll repeat it as well. And then you've got an army of customers that are all waiting to work with you and you're hardly having mm. to market yourself. It's brilliant. <laughs> so, so are you looking for the right brand message and to know how to put that language together? Because there is a way and we're going to be showing you that as part of the Kickstarter. Okay, so on to the next step. Now, again, without this, it doesn't matter when you, you know, what you're thinking of saying to people, if you don't say it at the right times, as in when they're listening, then it's going to fall on deaf ears. Whereas if you do do this, it means you've got more people actually ready to engage with that message that you have, and therefore you've got a far greater opportunity to increase sales. And there's a way of finding this out, and it's very, very nifty. It, it is. <laughs> and this particular step is when it's the best time to target your ideal customers. So yes, as Sammy said, we've got a really good way of finding <laughs> out exactly when is the right time um, based on statistical results of our own as well as some trends that we can show you as well. And again, what's also important about that is that, again, we, we meet a lot of businesses that they create something and they sell it or they try and sell it. And what they find is that and you might find this is that your customers aren't always ready to buy from you when you're ready to sell. So it's really important that you understand the times of the year, what the trends are, even the times of the month, the times of the week, or even the times of the day that your ideal customers are looking for what you're providing. And that way you can create a campaign that, again, it has no wastage. There's no wasted time, energy, or money because you're able to target the people that you want to work with, the, the very, very people that you want to work with at the time they're actually searching for you. And that is crucial, absolutely crucial to your business. So at this point, let's just really, really quickly recap. First of all, it's about where, where is the right place to start so you don't waste time and you find out what needs to happen first and you need to you find out certain things about you and your business that are going to make a difference to how it gets, um, gets the traction you need. Then who is your ideal customer? How do you find out who that ideal customer is? What are the best ways to start attracting those ideal customers? How you can create a message using the language that is going to relate them to you far more quickly. And then when's the best time to start communicating that message so that your ideal audience are actually listening? So let's look at the next step because without this one, then basically you're going to be in a stage where as you maybe you are doing now, you're getting customers on board, they're paying you for your service, but that's the end of it. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing else happening after that. They're not necessarily engaging with you any further. But with this step, when you've learned this particular element, you'll find a way to make those customers stick around and pay, pay much more for the services and value you and talk more to other people who can also become your customers. And this step is how you engage them into a lifetime relationship. Yeah, I mean, because it, it takes eight, well, they used to say it takes eight times more energy to attract a new customer than it does to work with an existing customer that you've already spent well, yeah, the well, time and energy getting them through the door. And then you're just focusing on, on uh, you know, customer after customer after customer, when actually you've got loads and loads of people that, are, that you've probably worked with or people that you're going to work with. So making sure that you've got a strategy in place that engages them, that nurtures them, that gives them repeated wow experiences that means that they not only come back to spend more money with you but that they tell other people to then come back and spend more money with you as well so let's ask you the question 
have you got customers who are you are very pleased with what you've done but that's the end of the journey if that's the case then this step is going to really really help you now on to the next step and the final step in this sequence of the kickstarter now this is where because you could be doing so many things Without this step, you could become effectively very, very busy and potentially a busy fool because the things you're doing aren't necessarily getting the kind of conversions of customers that you're looking for. And traction of yeah, your business. Absolutely. And, and building your brand as you go. Whereas with this step, then you, you'll be able to find a way of doing this so you're not continually involved on a one-to-one -one and personal basis. And that step is how you can uh, make your brand radiate more than anyone else, anyone else in your industry and make things happen while you're not even there. Yeah, and this, this again is key. So many people are wasting time and they're, they're wasting money and energy because they're, I, I mean, if you've ever been to a networking event and you've had a, a chat with someone or you might have been at a wedding or you could have been anywhere where somebody has said to you, oh, so what do you do? And that's that crucial moment, isn't it? <laughs> Where what you say is going to make or break the relationship. And you will have had people that have done that with you and then they go on and on and on and they talk and they just basically vomit all of these messages at you hoping that something is going to stick. But that's not going to make them radiate in your eyes. And if they're not radiating to you, then they're not radiating to other people. And you want to be that person that is radiating more than anyone else in your industry so that when they are ready to buy what you provide, when they search for you, they find you. When what they find about you is completely consistent, that means that they're then going to trust you. When they trust you, they will convert into a, a potential friend from a stranger. And once you've got them as a friend, that's when you can radiate more than anyone else in your industry to make sure they buy from you repeatedly for the lifetime of your business. And that is very powerful. Absolutely. And maybe that's something where you want to actually find out how to do. Maybe you're in a position where your competitors right now who are not as good as you have greater visibility than you and are stealing your potential customers. Well, obviously, it's time to change that. So we're going to show you some great steps. So that is the kickstart of the sequence we're going to be going through today. Now, obviously, we can't go through all of these in great depth because you haven't got masses of time. However, we're going to be taking you through some of these key steps so you can start taking action literally today. So let's get started. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how you can start to build buzz around your brand. Okay, so. So this is the, the Kickstarter. Kickstarter. <laughs> so let's get Kickstarter. And we're gonna actually delve into one area, which is at the, the methods of attraction, how to attract your ideal customer. Okay. Cool. And one of, the, one of the first things that we want to impress upon you really more than anything is that when you have fun in your business, that's when you become more magnetic. It's when, you, when you're when you so serious about what you do, and, and there is a time to be serious, of course there is, but when you make something fun, that's when it gets shared. And one of the most important things you need to do to attract your ideal customers is making sure that you are seen and that you're visible and that you look enjoyable to work with. People buy from people, they don't buy from the business. They, usually they buy because of trust, credibility, connection, relationships. And you've probably found that before when you've bought something, when you've invested into, into a product or a service. So make your business fun. Now, I want to share with you, just go through a couple of ideas, which, um, which hopefully will get the message across to you that you can create things that are fun and that get shared. And not only that, but they make money as well. And this, you, is, a, and this is a method of, of creating awareness around you and your business and the fact that you are fun to work with and things like that. And that's what I mean. This is just one method of attraction you may not have thought of. Yeah, so you might recognize this. <laughs> 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 now, this was the ice bucket challenge. Uh, this is at my parents' house in France. And, uh, and and do you know what was great about this was that it got everybody involved. Everybody had a sense of fun. It had a sense of um, bringing communities together. Even nuns were getting involved. It was great because celebrities were 
bringing themselves down to the normal person's level. Everybody was getting involved. They were all looking silly. Everybody had a laugh. They were getting shares. That's what's really important is you see here, it's got so 20 cool. shares and th this it had gone up only minutes before. So, you know, if you think of Michelle Moan's network and how many people she's got in her network, how many people actually saw that. It was a way of building confidence and fun and connection with people that were already spending money with her. This, this ice bucket challenge wasn't just about helping ALS to make money and it did that in leaps and bounds and we'll share that with you in a, in a little while but what it also did was it created connection between friends between families between communities and between existing customers because it got them involved people were tagging it in they sent it viral this is what you need to be doing for your business is getting people to be sharing stuff about you now did it make money ha ah, boy did it make money 2.4 million ice bucket related videos were posted on Facebook. People were commenting, people were sharing, people were using the hashtag. And in one month, from the 29th of July to the 28th of August last year, they received $98.2 million compared with 2.7 million donated in the same period of the previous year. So that just shows you that money can be made from creating a viral campaign and getting people to build a buzz around your business. Now, of course, we are talking about an ice bucket challenge, and you might be thinking, well, what's that, what's that going to do with business? Well, we're going to show you how, whilst that's such a great example of how much sharing can happen, we're going to tell you about the, how, in a more business sense, something like this can work for you as well. Yeah, and that, that's what's really important. We're only sharing this with you just to show you how quickly that went viral and how much money was to be made out of that. Now, you know, you might not create a video that goes that viral, but you definitely can make money out of it. These are some of the um, the videos that went viral last year. And we're just going to show you one that's based on a product. product. Now, if you have a product in your business that you want to sell, what they've done is they, these guys have basically taken their product and they've highlighted all of its features by doing something really fun with it. This is why we love it. So we're just going to share this with you. Look, it's had over 11 million views. These guys have got nearly a million people subscribed to their channel, and it's because they're using an everyday product. Now, you will notice that the product they're actually selling is a food blender. It's just a blender. Now, there are loads of blenders that are out there on the market, and these guys, they knew they had the best blender in the world, and it was even in competition with some of the best world brand leading blenders, but they had to find a way of making sure their blender was the one that was, was purchased and became number one. And that's the same as you. If you relate yeah. that back to your business, it's about how you. do you get visibility in front of them and get seen, at least get checked out. And that's the point. Yeah. So these guys, they just found a really unique and fun way of showing what their blender was capable of. Well, a blend, that is the question. I mean, these guys, they blend all kinds of things to show how strong their blades are. It's gone completely viral. They even sell the dust from these things for eight or nine hundred dollars on eBay. It's crazy. Now we're going to do something kind of unique here. Here I have a dozen light sticks, and these are break and shake light sticks that last for twelve hours. Now it says on the destructions, <laughs> destructions. do not puncture, cut, or bite into light stick. Now, it doesn't say don't blend the lights. Right, so how can you challenge what you do? How can you challenge what other people do in your industry in this way? Let's turn the lights off for effect. See, look, they're showing that it's got an LED display. They're showing how well the blades are. How processing does it? Exactly. How yeah. quick. They're showing off their product by doing it in a fun way. Don't drink this. 
<laughs> now, so through they, being look, fun, they've got their web address on the end funny, of it as well. Exactly, they've got you watching right to the very There's end. No so you, you can't see do this. the web address, so you can go and, and check this this blender out because it must be good. Now these guys, they again, like you, as a, a small business owner, you probably don't have a massive budget to spend on marketing. Well, these guys, they only had a budget of fifty dollars for making a video, so they had to keep it really low budget. Now, by investing that $50, they found a really fun way, and it came when the the uh, managing director of the business was out the back in a room, and he was shoving all kinds of stuff in it. He actually had a piece of 4 by 2 <laughs> that he was trying to get in there. He was chopping it up and putting it into the blades to see and test how good the blades were, and that gave the marketing director an idea as to what they could do, and they started blending all kinds of stuff. They blend iPads. They, a little while ago, they blended um, uh, iPhone 6 versus Samsung. Samsung Galaxy, you know, they've got a huge following now. And what that does is because they've now got so many people that are, um, that are influenced and impacted by that brand because they're so memorable. Whenever they now need to buy a blender, they are going to think of Blendtec, and that's what's important. You need something that's going to connect you with your brand name, so when they think of it, they then connect it with you. Now, the traffic to the company's website, by them investing this $50 and making a fun video, increased by 650%, increased their sales fivefold. People were even going onto eBay and buying the leftovers. As you can see here, they fetched $800 and $901, respectively for the dust that was left over after they finished blending it and some videos have received over 28 million views because of that Blendtec is now set to make beyond 50 million in sales this year uh, and there's only one way that can possibly happen and that's by making the video so fun you're waiting for the next one yeah they didn't just blend one thing they created a series of things so that we could be excited about what is it then what's the next thing they could yeah. possibly blend with this thing and they've created a channel where you can also submit what you want them to blend so they're not sitting there having to think about what they should do and you could do exactly the same thing in your business is create a channel where you have people that are asking you for your next video they're giving you your content you're not sitting there thinking about well what could I do now it doesn't matter whether you have a product or a service even services can create very viral videos. They don't always have to be fun either. There might be a really serious point that you want to get across. So let's think about what you can do. Now, so because we've obviously showed you a product, now we'll look at some services. So you think, okay, well, how can a lawyer create a, a video that could go viral? Well, this is something that was picked up a couple of years ago. And as you can see, it's by Bloomberg Law. And this is how they have this video. They found a trend that was out there. Question, how do you make something involving a lawyer go viral on the internet? Answer, make the lawyer a dog. In February 2011, a Tumblr user posted this cute picture of a corgi in a suit. Then suddenly this week, two copies of the photo with humorous captions describing the dog as a lawyer were posted on the site Reddit. Thousands of users like the pictures and dozens more with new canine and legal puns sprouted up across the internet. Look at that, just one image. I mean, we're not going to play the whole video, but that again, what could you do in your industry? Are there images out there? Is there news out there which you could jump onto? There will be things that are happening right now. If you go onto Google, for example, um, we're helping a health retreat and detox spa to build their business through social media. And I went onto Google the other day and I just looked at what's coming up, what special occasions happen throughout the year. And it gave me absolutely all of the, you know, what are the, uh, you you know, National Awareness Month, what's happening in January, February, March, April, what can they be um, using and be future-proofing their marketing strategy with by looking at what's coming up in advance. You could do that as well. All it is is Googling it. See what's happening throughout the year. You could create your own day. <laughs> you don't have to wait for somebody else's. You could create your own day. You, you could have National um, national truth law week or whatever that is you know whatever your business is you could create something and, for and, and however you think your services wouldn't apply, apply to this imagine if let's say you're a tax advisor or an accountant something like that and there's a question you can ask to find out what say the asset assets are in your business and how much they're worth that are a massive thing towards what your exit strategy might be well there might be just one question or one thing one figure you've never checked in your business 
and you'll be absolutely astounded. And other people say, you've got to check this out, and they pass it on to others. Mm. And that's just something as you could argue as, as, as basic as, uh, or not yeah. basic, but you know, not as interesting, you might say, as accounting. Well, it doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't, what we're no, no, it but you cross. turn it into funny, yeah. or you turn it into an activity that's going to really get them, them really interested get in them what shared. the answer is to that question. Yeah, and that's how these guys use that. So they use this, and as you can see, they've got their own YouTube channel, Bloomberg Law. Um, so if you don't have your own YouTube channel, make sure you're setting up your own YouTube channel. And again, you can see that it's all viral um, and uh, it gets shared. You know, th this particular video that they have on the front there, it's got 1,729 views. Now, this is another way of using video to create an emotional response, as we said, where it's not necessarily... Um, a fun video, but it is getting a message across. Now, there might be something controversial in your industry that you can pick up on. There might be something dangerous. If they don't do this, this is what's going to be the consequence of doing it. As you can see, that they also won, um, they, well, they got put forward for an award as well. There's no reason why what you create cannot be award winning. <laughs> You see how low budget this is. It's a camera on one person. They've got very few props, few photo frames. Already you can tell that something's happened. To see how powerful and emotive this video is. And now here comes the most important and powerful part of the whole video. See how powerful that is. Now, how could you do this in your business? What will happen to your customers if they don't do what you can provide them with? If they don't take action with you, what could they do? Because that's, uh, would you agree that uh, people will um, move away from the pain sometimes rather than towards pleasure? So mm -hmm. if you're looking at helping them understand what the, uh, the consequences of them not taking action with what it is you have as a service, then you can really get them involved in wanting to, to make that move and start looking at the solution to the problem uh, and, as and when it arises. Yeah, and teach them why they shouldn't go elsewhere. I mean, you know, there's just a couple of ideas here, but, you know, if you sell golf clubs or golf equipment, then create a funny uh, comp compilation video. The thing is, all these videos, they're on YouTube. You can get hold of these things. You can put it together yourself and put your brand on the front or the end of it. Um, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff. Obviously, don't go trying to say that you own them those videos but create a compilation fail um, and say these videos were found on YouTube or something like that as long as you're not saying it is your own content and you're not trying to pass it off as your own you can use things like that now we're talking about one idea using video to get this mm. kind of engagement to, uh, some a way of um, you know, a method of attraction as we said earlier now, of course, you might be thinking, well, I've never put a video, video together before. Uh, I'm not sure how to edit this or get the, you know, download this or even upload this to something like YouTube. Well, we're going to be helping you as well a little later on, so stick around because we've got some great tips on how you can do that. Mm -hmm. Because the message is, truly, is you've got to get video bound if you want to get your business found. And it's much easier to get across how you feel and what's important to you by using video than anything else. It is the fastest way of you building that relationship. And just as we showed with that last video there, you could say that if you think about the, uh, your branding, yes, that's what you see. But in truth, what that video did was how it made you feel that makes it memorable. So think about how your customers feel because your brand overall is more than just what they see.
it is it is and uh, and like miles said we have something that uh, that's a nice little bonus that's right we <laughs> because we had so many questions come through about how do we do this we're seeing your videos and we, we we see your examples of how people should be doing this how do we do this so we created an 11 page video creation tips guide right from the very start of equipment to use the, the, the easiest methods, how you can do it on next to no money at all. Get the most exposure, exactly. how to build credibility, and how to save by, yourself time. Yeah, and the step <laughs> by step process of going that, getting that video from just concept through creation to publication and getting it out there on the likes yeah. of YouTube. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, certain steps within our brand Kickstarter. Well, what is the brand Kickstarter? Well, this is a special full one day masterclass where we teach these uh, particular skills and much, much more. And the investment for this is just 497 plus VAT for a full day of lots of techniques to get you started the right way and start getting the traction you need in your business. Yeah, the people that come on the, the, the Kickstarter, every single person that, uh, that comes on it, they always say that they would pay 10 times more that amount of money from what they got because it saved them so much time in making all the mistakes that they've made before. And this is another great example as well that we'll just show you. Another great example of how you can use video to help you build your brand. And this is what we've done. Uh, we've had people that have been on the course and they've sent us videos. We haven't asked them to do it, but they've sent us videos because they've loved what, they, what we've done so much. And uh, in truth, we could tell you all day long you know, how valuable this Kickstarter workshop could be for you. But the truth is, it's better to hear it from those who've actually been there. So what video testimonials do you need to get for your business? Listen to what these people are saying and think about how you could get your customers and potential customers to help you build your brand through video. I have to say that um, it doesn't matter whether you've been in business five minutes, uh, thinking about being in business, are an entrepreneur, new startup, or have been in business for quite some time. It were, the brand Kickstarter, I've just got nothing but glowing and positive things to say about it. There was um, the day is packed full of brilliant information, uh, practical exercises, um, where we were supported throughout the day. Um, we were able to support each other as well. It's a great team working together. And also packed full, as usual, with their um, fun and energy throughout the day. Um, I usually come away from these kind of events feeling quite overwhelmed, uh, too much information flying around in my head and not knowing how to actually go about implementing it afterwards. That wasn't the case this week. I actually came back and because I created a plan on the day and got some great practical advice, pretty much hit the ground running the next morning and was able to put a lot of it in place. Um, I'd really recommend this workshop to anyone who's in a situ similar situation to myself, who needs to work out exactly what their brand identity is and how to get their message, the right message, out to the right people. And uh, I really recommend that you go to Sammy and Mars Kickstarter today. Um, it was fantastic, apart from anything else, to be with very like-minded people. That's always great, isn't it? But the other thing was that what I really got out of the day was the action plan at the end so that you've got something really concrete, you've got something that made sense because very often it's very overwhelming isn't it to um, think well I've got to do this and I've got to do that and sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. So Sammy and Mars are great at breaking things down into little chunks so that actually it makes sense and you can formulate your own action plan by the end of that day and you'll be able to do that to say well what am I going to do over the next three months because you will get exactly what you need in order to ensure that your business attracts the right type of people and that it gets off to the right start so that's how you could use it. I mean, we've got hundreds of testimonials that we're not going to put on here. But as you can see, what we've done with these videos is we've taken a little cross selection. I mean, the videos they've sent us, they're usually about two or three minutes each. So we've just taken a little cross section of them and we've put them together as a little showreel. That's something that you can create for your business. And it's important that you 
do get other people, as Miles said, to talk about your business because you could talk till the cows come home. But if somebody else is recommending your business, it carries a lot more weight. And this is where you can really get um, to start building your brand in such an amazing way because, of course, you, you want customers. What, what, what would it be like if those customers became ambassadors? Just mm -hmm. like our customers have been, they're saying, oh, anybody who sees this, you've got to get on this Kickstarter workshop. So it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So, okay, moving on because we want to get to, to carry on getting the great value that we're offering you today. And here we are with the R of Kickstarter, and that's how can you create a brand message using the language that you need to use so that people will relate to you. Okay, so the one of the most crucial things that you can do, and we always get people say to us, well, when we're building a brand, what's the first thing you recommend that we do? Well, be known for just one thing. That is absolutely the, the most crucial thing about your brand is be known for just one thing. If you're known as the jack of all trades, you will literally be the master of none. And you've probably had this situation where you've gone to buy something before and you've chosen someone that to work with or a product to work with because they are the masters of it. That's all they do. They live, breathe, eat and sleep it. They walk and talk it. You're more likely to go to that person than you are somebody else Else that does a load of other things oh and by the way we'll just chuck that in uh, we've decided to start doing this now you really do not want to be known as that and you're never going to stand out if you do not position yourself to be the master of one thing you can still provide the services you provide if they're in within a range what we're saying is is what you're known for you can be known for one of those key things that maybe opens the door that's how you want to then be remembered and be seen as the expert in your industry so to be known as the expert in your industry, one of the most crucial things is to either pick a product or service out of, I mean, you, you know, there's no doubt you will, you will deliver more than one thing, but it's what you lead with that's important. You can have other products and services that are sat behind the very thing that you're leading with, but there will be something that you sell, which is easier to sell than others. That is um, probably a higher price than the, some of the other things that you sell and is a good lead into the other things that you sell. So for example, uh, a company that I worked with many years ago, we're talking back to 2001, and uh, you'll probably recognize the brand that I'm going to talk about when you see the logo. I'll send the ladies anyway. Yeah, the ladies <laughs> will or the men will recognize it because their ladies have got them or someone else has demanded them or the daughter or the cousins have them. I mean, this is just, it went completely crazy. And there was a reason why it went crazy. Now in 2001, a guy called Martin Penny came into the design agency that I was working with at the time. And he'd found a product overseas. So it wasn't even his product. He hadn't developed it and he wanted to brand it. He wanted to bring it into the UK. So we had to think about a strategy that would enable him to charge the highest price in his industry for what he did, to make it completely exclusive, and to make it a desirable product that everyday consumers would want, but they had to pay a very, very high price to get it. That company was GHD. And you've probably seen the hair straighteners or the hair products. They've gone into lots of different things now. They even have different colors, different types of shades. They've got leopard print straighteners. They've got all kinds of straighteners now. But the most important thing is that is what they are known for. They are known predominantly for hair straighteners. Now, when they founded their business, we launched them just into salons across the UK. Now, the average price for a pair of hair straighteners at that time was around 28 to 30 pounds. That's what people were paying for a pair of hair straighteners. But these were the first ceramic hair straighteners. So they already had something unique about them, which could be positioned in a way that would help us to increase the price point. So whereas normal straighteners were 25, 30 pounds, their straighteners were 100 pounds. They were close to 100 pounds and they're more than that now. So you'd think surely no one would pay that for a hair straightener because there are already hair straighteners out there that are cheaper. Well, no, because we made it so exclusive just to hair salons, 
than the normal public then wanted this same look that they got when they went into the hair salon. So they then started to make them um, not only exclusive to hair salons, they started to create a consumer product as well. Well, their turnover was 12 million by the end of year two, and that was four times what they'd originally forecast. And by 2004, their turnover was up to a staggering 37 million. So in just three years, they went from zero to 37 million selling something that wasn't even their product, it was somebody else's product and they put their brand on it. Now this is known in the industry as white labeling. So if you don't have a product or a service, is there somebody out there who already has a product or service that you can apply your brand to? Another person who is brilliant at doing this is Jason Vale, the juice master. Juice is in his brand name that he wants to be known for. So he's a juicing expert. He lives, breathes, walks, talks, eats and sleeps juice. When you look at his brand and where that's applied, you can see the top left one is a, a YouTube video. Look at the branding consistent to the Facebook timeline that he's got across the face of his business page. Then there's an email that I got through there as well. You can see the email had the same branding applied to it. So make sure that your brand is consistent. Whatever you are doing, be known for one thing and make it consistent so that only one thing is what is seen by everybody. That builds trust, it builds credibility, it builds connection, it builds an income for you. And here's a great example of where someone has productized their knowledge. So putting this into a system that obviously works really well, he's got lots of great testimonials about how people are either losing weight or getting more energy by following his juice programs. He's got celebrity testimonials as and well. Exactly, to the point where his brand is so great, he's now branding products with his name and, and, and um, endorsing well, again, products. white labeling. Exactly. He, again, you know, other people have created food processors and juicing machines, and he's now putting his brand to them because he's the most seen, he's the most visible. Are there other people out there that are juicing that are trying to lead the industry as a juicing expert yes there are in fact there are hundreds of them there are actually thousands of them all over the world and Jason Vale is the the master in the UK he's now becoming a worldwide master and seen on stages all over the world we've done exactly the same thing with the brand brains people kept referring to us as oh you've got to see miles and sammy the brand brains anything to do with branding you've got to go and see them it's not just about your logo it's about everything to do with your brand they can get you seen they can get you visible you need to see the brand brains and because people kept using this terminology we just thought well how could we how could we productize that how could we create that Absolutely, and uh, of course we, do, we realized this is just one of those methods of getting awareness out there, visibility, by creating a fantastic monthly publication, uh, which is a digital publication, and is effectively your monthly virtual marketing director with 24 sizzling pages with experts who we have been associated with in the best in industry, yeah. providing loads and loads of knowledge. And now this we've is spent then, our money with them. I oh, think that's oh, the yes. most important oh, yes. thing. Is we've that, seen what they can do. Yeah, would you agree that when you're working with somebody who spends someone else's money in comparison to somebody who spends their own money on testing things out, the person who's using someone else's money isn't necessarily going to be as interested in the results and getting uh, a, an improvement on the results as the people who are doing it in their own business. And every single person that we have writing for the brand brains is spending their own money marketing their own business, their own products and their services, and they share every month in this online resource what it is they have done in their business that's made the biggest difference in the last 30 days. And we sell that at a subscription of £6.95 a month, and that then helps marketing directors in business, it helps business owners, anybody who's responsible for getting more customers of the right um, stature into that business this resource helps them to do that. And it was another way of us saying, how can we help smaller businesses Absolutely. to get our information and get our knowledge, and we share that in a way that's affordable to them and also affordable to us. So, and, really, and really accessible. Yeah, so really accessible. Accessible And be able to review it and revise, rise on it and make a difference and start so, taking action. And again, it has brand in the title. So you'll start to see a theme when you become known for one thing. So we've got our magazine, The Brand Brains. We've got our online resource, How to Build a Brand. We've got our book, How to Build a Brand, The Seven Reasons Why Customers Don't Choose You. Now our book, 
went to number one in Amazon. It was an Amazon bestseller. Within eight hours, we had 1,100 downloads in that eight hours, and the book went completely viral. And we did that because we are seen, we are credible, we are the leaders in our industry, and people got so excited about it, they shared it. Again, our program, this is our top end program, the brand accelerator, where we go through five stages of the business and we look at every crucial element of your business from the business plan, how you're communicating yourself, who you're communicating yourself to, how you're going to build and nurture relationships with them, creating systems that help you to run your business when you're not there, and how you look at online and offline marketing communication to build your business for you. That is a, our, one of our big products that we've created, a big program. We've got people internationally that are on it but again it has the word brand in the title it gives it away you got the brand Kickstarter it gives it away so we are known for that one thing what do you want to be known for so here we are, we're talking about the Brand Brand Kickstarter. And just to give you an update again, the Brand Brand Kickstarter is a one day masterclass with both Sammy and myself. And we've got free bonuses, the 11 page uh, video creation tips guide, yep, and of course that. the book which we've been talking about, the seven reasons your customers don't choose you. And, and we will sign that book. And we'll sign, it's a signed book. <laughs> and the investment for that is just 497. Okay, but here's, here's the thing. You can go and check out the dates and venues at the brand Kickstarter dot co dot uk yes. brand hyphen kickstarter dot co dot uk okay so moving okay. on so moving on what do you want to be known for and we want you to take the next 20 to 30 seconds just to make some notes on what you want to be known and found for so take that time now and we'll just give you some tips here think about your services you're providing which seems to be the door opener perhaps the one that people are asking for first and then discover what else you have within the suite of services or products that you provide. Are still here, don't worry. Okay, so once you, now you uh, get into that point of doing that, and of course, continue this yeah, thinking as you go that. forward. Um, we're now going to um, show you then what you can be doing now when you yeah. know what that thing once is. Once you know what you want to be known for, the next thing you want to do is claim your fame name. So, uh, yeah, what do we mean by this? Yeah, what do we mean now? If you go into Facebook and then you go into YouTube and then you go onto Twitter. You get your email address, you've got your website address. If all of those things have the same, what we call, fame name, then again, it's another reason why you will be memorable, why your brand will be consistent, and why you will be trusted, and why that then converts into cash. So as you can see here with Andy Harrington, with the Jet Set Speaker, he had um, a system that he created called the Jet Set Speaker System. And we, we said to him, that, you know, if you want to build your business and grow your brand, and you want to, and he does um, as part of his strategy, and he's building his business so that he has other coaches now underneath him. But at the time when we were talking to him about this, he hadn't really made that transition yet. And that was one of the concerns was about how do you grow a brand? How do you build your brand so that it's not you that's in demand all the time? Now, the way to do that is to build your brand as the celebrity, so you're the celebrity behind it. So what we did was we changed the focus of his business so that, the, that he was creating a profile for the Jet Set Speaker, and Andy Harrington is the celebrity behind the Jet Set Speaker. That meant that all of his profiles, as you can see here, his website addresses, all of his social media channels, they are all Jet Set Speaker. So when you type Jet Set Speaker into Google, that's what, that's what comes up. And now there's so much that's going up there about him. All of his rankings are increasingly getting higher every day. And it doesn't matter what he does now. It, it's 
the jet set speaker is what's getting the name it means that he can now be on stage talking all over the world as the jet set speaker but he also has other people now that are talking all over the world as the jet set speaker and they're positioning themselves in their own right and they are a celebrity behind their own version of his business so he now has coaches all over the world that are training his system so again the reason for claiming your fame name is that when you sell your business that then is a valuable asset it's a valuable part of your brand if you own these names and you own that identity you now have a much bigger a business a much bigger value financially to your business because you're selling one whole thing and it has all of the goodwill it has the whole brand and all the things that are associated to it already in it when it comes to selling now you might be thinking well I've got no intention of selling my business well that's fine but if you set your business up in this way from the very beginning then at least you have the choice absolutely and again a great example here is, is that what this this has happened with this brand is a created real estate it's not just uh, social media now, which is this sort of intangible thing. There's real estate there, something that's actually worth money. And that's the point here. Um, now, so where have you got to that point where you've decided what it is you want to be known for? Think about what your fame name can be and start getting those social media and domain names so that you can start to own that space. We've got some resources that help to do that that we share on the brand Kickstarter as well that yes, speed up that true. process. So yeah. you're not having to go into every single social network to check whether the name is free. There is a resource that we share that you can get it all straight away. All so, there's, so there's your top tip there in that particular step. Okay, so moving on. Uh, that, but we just uh, the recap where we were. We went right through the uh, Kickstarter program. We're now on to the R, which is the radiate. way you can radiate how your brand can radiate more than anyone else now, in your obviously industry. there are seven steps but what we don't have time to do is go through all seven <laughs> that's why we've put in three easy steps in this presentation because we're going through three of the steps with you at a top level so that you can get ideas that will help you in your business okay so what is this step all about well what well, like we mentioned earlier it's about how can you do all these things when you've only got you you've only got 24 days and hours in a day uh, and you can't be working all that time well the, the the key here is how to you can be present as a brand even when you're not there so use the tools that are available to you in facebook it has a, a schedule posts a feature to it so you can go into your Facebook page and you can set all your posts up for the next however many days you want to now one of the things that Miles and I do regularly is we create series so um, the last the last series that we put out there we created was a business growth series it was a uh, small business growth tips and we did 10 so we created 10 videos we launched one video a day and we launched it at the same time every day at 11 o'clock because that's when our target audience are most likely to be uh, logging back onto their machines so we made sure that we were sending our message out there at the right time Time for them when they're looking for it now you could do exactly the same thing for your business and make sure that by people expecting what's coming that next day rather than you having to sit there and, and think right okay it's 10 to 11 I better start uploading and <laughs> um, don't do that you know sit down maybe spend an hour or two just planning what content you're going to be delivering over the next seven days and then get that scheduled into Facebook so at least you're getting your presence out there if you want to do it across Facebook and Twitter and other social networks you can use a resource such as hootsuite.com and uh, you know if you google that you'll find what you want there's socialoomph.com there's some other uh, various channels that you can use to do that I do recommend that you don't do that though you're gonna get better results when you're physically there to respond to people so if you set something up and you schedule it that's great because you then don't have to worry about it if you can't get to your computer or you can't get to your smartphone to check in but you are far better setting those things up and then just make sure you do check in and make sure you're around because when you schedule stuff and you're just broadcasting things at people you're not then building relationships you're not asking questions you're not getting interaction you're not encouraging engagement and that's really where you're going to start to get the results for your business so you Use the tools that are there to help you schedule but make sure that you do check in at the same time that you've scheduled them for so you can be there to answer questions and the other thing is use um, use 
your network, use your position in your industry to get to build your position even further. So an example of that is you see Dr. Hillary Jones on the front cover of this healthcare guide. Well, he's not the only doctor in the world, is he? And he's probably not even the best doctor in the world, but he is the best known. And that's why he is getting speaking opportunities. That's why he's the person that they've put on the front cover of this healthcare guide. This was something that was free that came in a supplement with a newspaper and it was him that they approached to write it. So why can't that be you? Why can't it be you that is blogging, that has blogs going out there, that are launching, that are then being shared across networks, that are shared in forums, and that you become known as that industry expert? Yeah, and it reminds me, actually, of one of the guys that's on our brand accelerator who got asked to go on to a Australian TV as, far as, as, as part of his, um, his expertise, and then recently got asked uh, by a UK radio station. Now, what, what was different about him than any other in his industry? And he's in the personal training yeah. industry as yeah. well, so I'm sure you'd agree that that is a flooded industry. Oh, there are hundreds of thousands of, of personal trainers. Yeah. It's how did he get to be the one that was invited? And he's as much an expert or better expert than any of those. What the difference was is he created that visibility so that others became aware of him and saw him as the expert in that industry. And you can do the same too. As we see here, does, you know, we're on YouTube visibility is something you can create through all the different social media channels that are available using the tips that we've been giving you as well today. Yeah, and what can you create? What guides could you create? What how-tos could you give? What ideas could you give to people? What challenges have they got coming up? What is controversial about your industry? How can you cause the biggest buzz around your brand that you can without offending people? You know, that that's, offending people isn't a good way to go. But what you could do is you could have somebody interview you yes yeah, so you, you, can, you can challenge else. you can challenge opinion you can provide your expertise to demonstrate the value you're offering by by telling people what it is they, they could do about something yeah so, so there's all sorts of methods here that you yeah. can start to build that visibility and to make people come back think about how you can turn that into a series so that people realize there's something following on you're leaving them hungry for the next step and therefore they're gonna come back and watch them all and tell others. Yeah, and, and and just like it shows here, is to get people connecting that. So once you've created that one piece of content, how can you get it shared as much as possible without you having to be the person that's doing all the work to share it? You know, like we said earlier, it's creating something that people do want to share because it is unique, it's important, it's informative, and it helps them in their life or their business in some way. And again, that's exactly what we did with the brand brains. We do not create all of the content for the brand brains. We approached experts who have that knowledge, that have the, uh, uh, the commitment to their own business, to growing their own businesses and doing the things that help them move faster and move forward. Because in truth, what we realized, as you will do around the, uh, about those around you, is that we have this great expertise in branding, marketing, messages, and how you, how you um, turn those messages into buying customers. Well, these guys know how the tools um, out there that can be used to communicate those messages. So we have a, a basically created partnerships created with experts who allow business owners just like you to get your message out there. So what can you do that's similar to that? Yeah, who do you know? Who do you know in your industry that don't compete with you, but that could provide knowledge? And it doesn't have to be, you know, we've got a 24 page resource here that goes out every month. Yours doesn't have to be that big. It could be a newsletter. It could be a, um, an email that goes out. But it, it, what we want to get across to you is that, you know, one of the most widely wide challenges that we hear all the time from people is oh my god I haven't got enough time to do this this is going to take me loads of time I haven't got enough time for marketing but this is the point is that you don't have to be marketing yourself all the time get other people to do it and get other people involved in helping you to create your products and services because effectively we only write three articles in this in the publication every month we use our, our contributors to write the rest of that content and we facilitate this information so, it's so that, that the small business owners can get this information accessibly and affordably. So that's the power that we have. And because we facilitated it, we are recognized for it. We made this happen. 
What can you make happen that gives your customers absolute fantastic value telling others so that you can acquire more customers? And the other thing that we get asked regularly as well is, well, where do I get my information from? What if I can't think of what to write about? Or what's topical right now? Yeah, what's topical? So there's a couple of resources here for you. If you use socialoomph.com, that will tell you everything that's going on in Twitter. So if you uh, sign up to Social Oomph, and I mean, it has other features as well. I did mention it earlier as something you can schedule things for Twitter in. But um, we use it just for the keyword side of things. So we've typed in all the keywords that we want to know about all over the world. And we then, every day, we get a digest telling us what's going on. Now, the great thing for you is using this or something like search.genio. In fact, you will have seen a little prompter come up on the screen earlier, maybe, where that was us getting a report on things that are happening <laughs> for the keywords that we've told it that we want to know about. And that's great because you're constantly finding out what's going on in the world. That's in the great. moment in as the well. Moment. Yeah, that's great for you because if there's something going on in America or something going on in Japan or in Europe and you are the first person in your country to talk about it, then you look like the thought leader, even though it wasn't you that came up with the information. And it's just a case of you having little prompts that then that will spark something else off in your mind that helps you to create more content without you duplicating somebody else's work or pretending that it's it's yours. You don't need to because you'll have your own opinions on it. So this is a great way to do it. And of course, once you've then got that content, the biggest thing you can do is give, give, give. Because the more you give, the more engagement you're gonna get from people, the more trust you're gonna get from people, the more visibility you're gonna get in front of those people. And the more people you've got visibility with, the more chance you have of getting inquiries coming through um, that will lead to at least a relationship and will hopefully either lead to business with them or through somebody that they know because they'll recommend you. And the tendency is for small businesses to think about when they're wanting to make a sale is to make that contact and immediately try and convert that into a sale. Well, we're, we're in a different age. It doesn't work. It's about giving value first, giving that impression that you care before they've even invested in your product or your service. So this is the, the tip of the day, really. This is the one that's gonna make a difference between you and your competitors in how much value are you prepared to give, 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 so that they will receive and then return by investing in you. Mm. And uh, here are just a couple of examples. We've got three examples of what we do, that we give, that you could, there's no reason why you can't do something similar. So we do a, a, a Q and A, giving people on Twitter the opportunity in the moment to ask their questions that are potentially holding their business back from a branding and marketing point of view, and we answer them instantly. So those questions go out to them and anybody that's following us on Twitter and the, and the, uh, the Brand Brains Q&A. Yeah, now that could take a lot of time if you're doing that all day, every day. So the way we make our productive time as, as, uh, as productive as possible is to do it between eight and nine every Tuesday. So from eight until 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time on Twitter, we are live they're ready to answer any questions that come through. And we we just answer them Absolutely. and everybody gets what they need. And then they know that they can ask questions throughout the week if they want to. And then we'll come online from eight till nine the following week and we'll answer those questions. Yeah. So that's something that you could do. You could create a hashtag for what you do and you could start creating little sessions. You could do live yeah. sessions with people, questions and answers. It could be an FAQ. There could be all kinds of stuff that you do. And the thing we teach our students on the Kickstarter is how to know when, because we've uh, chosen a specific day and we've chosen a specific time for our audience. Mm -hmm. Now, our audience isn't necessarily your audience. What we can do is show you exactly how to find out when they are listening. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we do, we mentioned it earlier, was in our YouTube channel, we're constantly creating videos. We have people that are asking us questions. And of course, because they're asking us questions at Brand Brains Q&A, that's then giving us information that tells us, okay, these are questions that other people might have too. We create videos, we upload them to YouTube. Those videos then get shared, they get found. And again, it's building credibility. We've had people asking us um, to work with us through those videos just because they've seen us so often giving advice with the first people they think of. And likewise, YouTube, as we know, is a massive resource of uh, people getting in, in connection with information. So is Facebook. So we created a how to build a brand group on Facebook where people can come in and ask, ask their questions. And when we answer them, anybody that's going to that page can see those answers. And you know how we got the greatest impact? We could have just answered those questions by typing them out. We made a video. 
so we can make it personal to that person who gave us the question and make it broadly um, uh, relevant to the other people who are coming to look, look at how to build their brand. Mm. So that's, that's the real power that we have there with those, just those couple of resources. Yeah, and uh, and what's also what's great about that is on the Kickstarter, one of the things that we do for the people that come on the brand Kickstarter workshop is we we've got fourteen videos that we've made, which are part of a, a really good business growth series. So it's not the business growth series I talked about earlier. These are questions that people have asked us over the last eight years. That ha and when we've answered them, they've said, oh my God, that made such a difference to my business. So we've then made uh, videos that are specifically relevant to growing, building and developing a brand and building as much of a buzz around it as possible. And of course, as you grow your business, there are going to be some challenges with growth as well. So we've, sh we've created some videos on how to help you manage that growth and how to set up systems in place that stop you from certainly dealing with some of the challenges that we've had to deal with as we've grown. Absolutely. And when you're giving value, we mentioned earlier, when you, it's give, 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 we've done the same thing. And uh, we used another uh, mode of communication, and this is to do with uh, mobile phones, because wouldn't you agree, it's great to get uh, email addresses. If you've got the mobile number, even better, because you've got another way of getting directly to them, because of course most people have a mobile these days. But it's important you add value to them. You don't just get their mobile number and then spam them. That's the last thing you want to do, because that's gonna, that's gonna build your brand in absolutely the wrong way. So what we did was we created a, a, a way of getting a certain phrase texted to a certain number so that the people who typed it in could get a fantastic gift from us. And the conversion was astronomical. 71% of the people we showed the number to and told them where to, what to text to it, then typed those details in, giving us their mobile number, and then in return we gave them a link to a fantastic product called the, the, um, the Six Step how to become the market leader in your industry guide. Yeah, and, and what's what's fabulous about that is, of course, we created something that was, it was worth so much value. We, you know, it's a whole system and we've given that away. When we say give, 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 we really mean give, give, give. And here it is. This yeah, is so here it is. And in fact, I think if you text wow to 66777 six, seven, 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 now, you'll, you'll, get, that you'll get that as well. Um, so, you know, and that's really important is that we've created a way of, of building a relationship Relationship with people who don't know us yet, who have no idea who we are, but they know that they want to build their business. They want to become the market leader in their industry. So it's them that's making the money, not their competitors. And we found a way of being able to get that to people. So if you text wow to double six triple seven now, you're more than likely going to get that as well. <laughs> and, and, and that alone will give you some ideas gift. of what you can be doing to give your customers or your potential customers value now before they're prepared to invest in. Yeah, and as part of that, what we also give is the light membership for free, where you get a, a weekly branding tip straight to your email, which again is adding value to you. So we're not spamming people, we're not sending things out too much, we're giving people exactly what they need, and this is what you need to do with your business as well. Okay. So this is all about making sure you're building your brand, that you're attracting clients to you. So you're not going out there and having to find loads and loads of clients that they're, or customers, they're actually being attracted to you. And then they're going and telling other people about you. So you've got even more people. You know, imagine having an order book where you don't have enough time or enough products to actually service them all. That's a real good problem to have. Indeed. Now we've just given <laughs> you- then you can find a way of servicing them. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now we've just given you some fantastic ways to first of all understand ways to communicate with your audience much more effectively so that they engage here we go. with you. Here we go, there's another update from uh, Julio, there. yeah. There's another, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> come through in French because I live yeah, in France. <laughs> yeah, so, so there we go. These are the tips that are really gonna help you uh, take action right now. And um, this is, that's what it's all about, in truth, is that you can know all these things, but not take action. So how does action change things? Well, there are things that you can do right now. There are light bulb moments that you've had during this presentation that hopefully you could go away and start implementing in your business straight away. But there are also other things you can do. And Miles is going to share that with you right now. Absolutely. So we talked about the Brand Kickstarter as the one-day masterclass that you can come to. And we said that you can get there's an address you can go to to find out the dates and venues for this. And here's the great thing about this thing, is that we talked about there's a free bonuses, the 11-page video creation guide, 
The Seven Reasons Your Customers Don't Choose You, signed book by myself and Sammy. And we also said that the investment for this is considerable, but it's about your business and getting you started in the right way so you waste no money. Well, that investment is 497 But here's the treat. We've got an offer for you for this webinar specifically, and you can get that for just 297 saving you £200 on a one-day masterclass with myself and Sammy. So go and look at the dates and venues and check out Brand Kickstarter uk. that's brand hyphen kickstarter.co.uk and you can get a, a, a fantastic price on this by adding this promo code. When you go to the next page, what you want to be typing in is the word brand, B-R-A-N-D, and you'll see that that price that, that is at 497 for everybody else because you've come through this webinar, if you type in the, uh, the code brand when you go through to the next page after the one you see, you'll see the price comes down to 297. The price will drop. So let's uh, go back to us. Hello again. <laughs> Hello again. Yeah, we, we really, truly hope you've enjoyed that yeah. uh, and the value that we've given you and give you some great ideas that, that you can start taking action on right now. Yeah, and, and also as part of the Kickstarter, one of the things that I wanted to, to mention as well is that if you are doing this and you want uh, uh, proof of doing this as a qualification, you get a certificate for joining us for the day. And we've also got a gift. We have a oh, gift. Oh, yes, we have got. a gift that we can't yeah. possibly tell you what that is no, right now. No, no. Uh, but it's something that's going to help you take action even quicker. Yeah. And it's just something that's going to enable you to get the visibility we talked about, learn how to communicate much more effectively and yeah. more quickly to the ideal customers that are going to pay for the lifestyle that you deserve. Yes. And and also, there is a one-to-one. -one. We have a one-to-one -one during the session as well, during that day. And the reason we can do that is because we keep all of our brand Kickstarter masterclasses really small. We always invite some of our brand accelerators as well, so you can meet them and they can give you ideas on what they've been doing. And um, what's been working for them yeah, as well. Yeah, what's working for them, so that'll help you. And you will also have a lot of visibility already coming to your business by the end of the day because we, uh, there are certain things that we do, we do throughout the day, day yeah. that make sure that your business is getting shared by the other people that are in the room. So there are some really important things there. Obviously, there's the follow-up video series that you get after, because again, as we said during this presentation, it's important that you don't just deliver the thing that you've promised to deliver, that you continue delivering wow experiences after, because you're not going to have to spend a great deal of money on marketing if you're wowing the people that have already spent money with you. They'll go out there and they'll share their business or we share your business with other people and that's how we've built our brand is by doing a good job by providing so much value when somebody spends money with us they're getting so much more in return for their investment and hopefully you will join us on our next Kickstarter when you go to that URL that we put up there brand hyphen kickstarter dot co dot uk when you go to that URL you will then find all of the upcoming dates. And if you can't book onto one of those dates, by the way, just uh, buy the ticket so that you're getting the, the value right now, so you're getting this discount, because you won't get it any other way. If you do that, and then get in contact with us by email, if you email me personally, sammy at howtobuildabrand.org, and we will change that date to whatever date it is that you, you can come to. And that way, you're still getting this deal but we'll make sure that you're getting the value at the time that you can make it as well. So, so once again, have we got any questions? Uh, Mars? Well, this is any it. Oh yes. So we had some questions come in. Mars has got the questions that have been coming in throughout uh, the the webinar, so that we can answer them for you. Okay, bear with me a moment. So I look and see what's coming. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Jem. Has said, hello, Jim. Um, hello, hello, Jim. Uh, I do, I do more than one thing well, and we talked about this about being known for one thing. Uh, I do more than one thing well, and my business will not grow if I only concentrated on one thing. Well, okay. again, the answer is, is that you can do lots. Like we That's said, you can worry. provide those services. What we're saying is what you get known for in the first instance. What, like, like we said about Jason Bell, the juice master. Mm -hmm. It's not just juicing he does. He provides retreats, all sorts of different programs you can go on, products that you can buy. Everything that's related to the juice. The thing is, he's called the juice master. He's not called the juice uh, retreat creator. He's the juice master. That's all we're saying there, Jen. Um, the, other, the other thing I would say about that as well is that, um, you know, don't get worried about being 
um, very focused on who it is you want to target. An example of this is a conversation that I had with somebody who asked us a question and we created a video for him and uh, a guy called Jason and he said I really want to get into coaching. I want to be a coach. I know that I want to help people and I want to coach them and uh, but I'm not quite sure who it is that I should be targeting. So I just, I created a video that really just uh, drilled down, layered down into why you would work with a certain type of person. Now, Jason, he was saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about if I just focus on working with um, a certain type of customer, is that going to alienate other customers? And our answer to that is, yes, it is. But that's exactly what you want to do. Because you see, I said, Jason, where do you add the most value? What is it you want to coach them on? And he wasn't quite sure. He just knew he wanted to add value. But by the end of the video, by the end of this coaching session I did with him, he realized that he could add more value to men that are going through a painful divorce because that's something that he has done and got himself through. Um, he's got a, a daughter, so if he works with men that have come from a divorce that have children and they need to manage that relationship so that they've still got a good relationship with the mother and the children, he can coach them on that. And actually, that's where he decided that he would get a lot of value. So, but then his question was, but aren't I really, um, am I, I'm lowering my income opportunity because then I'm just targeting men. I said, well, yeah, exactly. But there are enough men in the world, wouldn't you agree, who have gone through a divorce or going through a divorce that have children. What percentage of them do you actually need to convert to make a really stunning business that gives you the lifestyle you need? And, and how and many of them would be attracted to you, Jason, if they knew that's the one thing you were good at. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, um, and you are the master, you are known for that thing, and, and that's how you're then gonna get that reputation. So, now that obviously was me answering Jason, you need to think about this in your business as well. So get exclusive about who it is you want to work with. Until we got exclusive about who we wanted to work with, we were doing things because we could, not because we should. And if you've read our book, there is a saying that is all throughout that book that says, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And every person you work with that doesn't get you closer to where you want to be in future, that is a cost of opportunity to you, to your life, and your business. And you need to start getting very clear on that. So get clear on who your brand is, be known for just one thing, and then lead in with the other things once you've got them through the door. And this is one of the things you'll get from the Kickstarter. So as you'll see, the address is there to go to brand-kickstarter.co.uk yeah. to arrange your ticket. Yeah. Okay, so one more question. Okay, so uh, we had a question from uh, Ka Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Um, these brands all look so good. I uh, assume you mean the ones that you've been showing on screen. Right. Absolutely, there they do. Uh, Mine does not have that sort of visual impact. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, this is the truth. I and mean, the reason why maybe it doesn't is that the, the strategy you're following that's going to make you unique in your industry, maybe you don't have that out there just yet. You haven't looked at your strategy, which is going to uh, turn into the brand that's going to start making the difference to your, uh, your own perception out there, your visibility and credibility. So the one thing we'd say get right is, is, is look at your strategy and the design mm. of the brand will follow. Yeah, too many people, they go straight into visual. And um, again, I had this conversation with somebody the other day who's now booked onto the Kickstarter because he said, you know, Sammy, I've, I've read you on a Miles' book. And one of the things you talk about is getting the visual identity right. And I think that, uh, you know, I've already learned from what I've read so far that I'm probably um, jumping the gun with where I am in my business because I'm focusing on what the visual identity looks like. And actually, I don't have some of this other stuff back here that you talked about. So, so am I actually, am I, um, you know, jumping the gun with getting the visual stuff created before I've got the strategy right? And our answer is absolutely yes, 100%. But you're not alone if you're thinking this as well because probably 99% of business owners do exactly that. They think, right, I've got to have a, a logo and they go out and they get it done. And the worst thing they can do is, is that. Because that logo, if you imagine you've got your business, if you imagine uh, working with a mechanic, for example, you've got your, your brand, which is the vehicle. And then you've got the, the identity, which is 
the brand of that vehicle. And there might be a certain make of car or vehicle that you really like. And there'll be other brands of car that you really don't like. Mm. And you'll associate with a, a particular vehicle that you really like. And there'll be a color that you really like. And that color will give you emotional associations to something that feels good. Well, your customers are exactly the same. And if you use a color that isn't right for your business and a logo identity that isn't right for your business, then effectively you've got the wrong vehicle. So it doesn't matter how much of the right fuel you put into it, you've got the wrong vehicle. It's not going to attract the right customers. So you need to make sure that first of all, you've got the right vehicle for your business. Only when you know that, and when I say about the foundation and the strategy, that's your wheels. Because you, your business isn't going to go anywhere unless you've got the wheels on it. So you need to make sure that you've got the right vehicle, that you've got wheels on it so that it's going to move, and that you put the right fuel into it. So that's the order in which you want to do it. And you don't want to be putting a logo or an identity or color or anything to it until you've got the vehicle ready and the, the wheels are ready to go. Because unless you know exactly where your brand's going to land in future, it's pointless you putting an identity and a face to it because it, it's going to be wrong. It will be wrong and it will change. Yeah, and when you think of brands that you have a relationship with, there's a reason for it. It's not just because they look good. Yeah. There's something that connects that brand with you. It just reaches and out from your heart and comes and in it, like that. Exactly. And draws you right in. And it's amazing when you get your strategy right and you know what brand messages need to be communicated, the way that your brand, it's your branding itself, can do that on your behalf. Mm. Okay, so we've got to, uh, thanks ever so much for sticking no, around. So I hope you enjoyed it. We've well. got, we've Sorry, got a lot. we can't answer them, but we will answer them by video. Yeah, so. and we're going to do, we'll do one more though for now. Okay. And, um, and here we, oh yes, I, I provide a service. Um, the ideas, you, most of the ideas you packaged oh, here. Oh, this is from Beiju. Are, Hello, Beiju. Are, are packaged products. Yes, so thanks, Beiju. Um, how do I package my service? Uh, very, very good question. Good. And um, an example we did show was Jason Vale, where he mm. packaged his knowledge. Well, we are also And an we are, in fact, exactly right. We, we could say that the service we provide isn't actually a tangible, physical thing you could deliver through the door. Well, that's right. That's because we deliver a service. Yeah. At the same time, valuable service. So how do we package up our product and service uh, to, in such a way? Well, as, as just as, as, as Jason Vale does too. So basically, our answer to you is, is that if you've got a really valuable mm. service, You've got to find out a way that you're going to communicate that, the value and the benefits of your service, and then and, and make it visibly appealing to your audience who are going to physically see it. And that's what you need to start doing in your business, is turning your knowledge into products which are then sold online or sold wherever you want them to be. And that way, you then have a huge amount of choice. And it's made a huge difference to our it has. lives by giving yeah, this choice. It has. And in, in, a, in a business sense, what we're saying is we used to have this formula. The formula was mm. exchange time yep. for money. All we've done is exchange more expertise for money. And so can you. But in a productized yeah. way, so we don't Indeed. have to physically be there. Absolutely. Now, you might be in a position where you have to deliver a service. If you're a trade, for instance, you still have to deliver a service one-to-one. Mm. -one. There are all, also ways that you can vastly expand your earning potential yeah. by doing something else as well as that, where the one thing keeps you in the game, you are the expert. Yeah. And the other way is it is basically creating a massive visibility to a suite of different things and uh, tips that you can uh, have people buy from you because without it, they can't make the difference in their lives or their business uh, that, that you can help them with. So... There we go. Well, hopefully we'll answer those yeah, questions. If you've, if you've got, got any other more. questions, yeah, come to uh, Brand Brains Q&A hashtag every Tuesday from 8 till 9. Or go, come and join us in our Facebook group, which is How to Build a Brand. And you just literally go into Facebook and type that into your search bar. You'll find it. And Most better, of and all, yes, better still, we hope that you will, you will join, join us on, on our next our, brand, our brand Kickstarter. Because it's we can about, work with you personally. Then. Well, that's true. It is. We can work with you personally. We can answer your own individual questions and look at your business from your point of view and give you some ideas of how you can turn around the potential you currently have now into something that's really life-changing. So take action and take action now and join us on the Brand Kickstarter, which is at the address wwwbrand hyphen kickstarter.co.uk and that's for the we'll brand kickstarter masterclass right and there's a link here, here for you to go to that uh, that page Hopefully and remember we'll remember remember that to get that great value a drop, uh, discount price we're giving for people on the webinar oh, yes. and you can too is to use the promo code brand b-r-a-n-d B -R -A -N -D. okay we'll hope to see you soon bye for now